let's compare the directions in problems 10, 11, 12, etc. with the previous directions. Notice that it starts out the same. Determine if the limit exists. If so, find the limit. If not, justify your answer. Uh, notice the absence of also sketch a graph of the function. And that's because um, some of these are more difficult to sketch. Um, we don't have parent fun uh, function background on uh, 10 and 12 to produce a graph without a calculator. All right, so 11, we would be able to produce the graph without a calculator, but uh, 10 and 11 would have to, uh, let me go back there, we'd have to use a calculator. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but hopefully everything's okay now. Uh, there's just going to be sometimes technical difficulties with uh, this technology. All right, so we're determining if the limit exists. If so, find the limit. If not, justify your answer. All right, so for number 10, the first thing we're going to do is try the direct substitution. That is plug 3 in, even though we're approaching 3 from the right side. All right, so that would be negative uh, 3 plus 4 all over 3 minus 3. Uh, the result is 1 over 0. We know that's going to be a does not exist because that's a vertical asymptote. All right, so we didn't even have to get down to the nitty gritty. We didn't have to plug in numbers <clears throat> close to 3 to the right of 3. Uh, it was easier to work with 3 as opposed to 3.1, 3.01. So that's the first thing you want to try <clears throat> is plugging in straight the number. All right, <clears throat> number 11. Plug in 3. Notice I'm losing the limit statement when I do a substitution in. Uh, plug in 3. If we have to, we'll choose numbers close to 3 to the right of 3. Uh, but we're not going to have to do that because we get uh, undefined. So this limit will not exist because there's going to be a vertical asymptote there. Uh, this is the one I said that you could graph without a calculator. Uh, let's revisit that. That is the reciprocal graph shifted right 3. So here's our vertical asymptote. The 2 vertically stretches the graph, but the negative is going to actually reflect it. So instead of having branches here and down here, we would then have branches here and a branch here. So if we were trying to be descriptive about what kind of asymptote it is, uh, we can look at this visual and say, well, here's 3. If I'm approaching 3 from the right, uh, I'm approaching a negative infinity. So uh, that would just be a little more descriptive, a negative infinity here. All right, um, going back to 10 now, um, like I said, it, it doesn't say to sketch the graph, but what if we did want to know what infinity we're approaching because of that vertical asymptote? Well, that would require us then actually plugging in uh, a number close to 3 but to the right of it. And if we just kind of did that mentally, plug in a number that's close to 3 to the right of it, and 4 is too far away. So if I plugged in 3.1 here, all we care about is positive or negative output. The denominator when you subtract and do the computations is going to be positive. When you plug in 3.1 and make it negative and add 4, you're still going to have a positive numerator. So for this particular problem right here, positive divided by positive would result in a positive answer, meaning that the vertical asymptote that we're approaching is uh, the, the positive one, the positive infinity. All right, let's look at 12. All right, I notice I'm approaching 5 from the left, um, like 4.9, 4.99, etc. But let's just go ahead and plug in 5 and see what happens. Uh, it's nice because the numerator is not going to be 0. The denominator will be 0. Uh, come back. So 4 over 0 is um, does not exist limit vertical asymptote. Okay, well, which vertical asymptote or which infinity are we approaching? If you wanted to further further investigate, You don't have to unless you're requested. Let me make that clear. It's just so much easier working with the integer. All right, um, let's plug in like 4.9. Remember, we're losing the limit statement, so 4.9 minus 1. It's going to be a positive numerator. Uh, so the opposite of 4.9 plus 5. Okay. So I know I'm going to have 3.9, a positive number over 0.1 and that looks like that answer is going to be 39 but it doesn't matter what it's going to be it just it just means that you're going to approach the positive infinity because of the cal calculations and again if you're afraid you're going to make some mistakes you might want to then in a second example plug in um, something closer to 5 than 4.9 so that would be like 4.99 
but the output should still be the same. Okay, otherwise we're just done when we say does not exist vertical asymptote. Okay, I, th I think we've explored all the um, situations that we need to um, as far as a limit not existing uh, at the case where we have a vertical asymptote, an asymptotic discontinuity. So now let, let's move on and look at some jump discontinuities uh, and limits that fail to exist there. Okay, paying attention to the directions, determine if the limit exists. If so, find the limit. If not, justify your answer. Uh, look, we're returning to sketching a graph of each function. Okay, uh, proceeding the way we did in the previous examples, let's just do a direct substitution. Let's plug zero in. Notice it's not from the left or the right. Let's just plug zero in. So what results is uh, indeterminate. Um, we're going to get zero over zero. That's indeterminate. Further investigation must take place. Okay, and I want you just to kind of process this for a minute. If you get zero over zero, when you're performing a limit action, zero over zero, um, what that means is we could either have a jump discontinuity or we could have a point discontinuity. And it's important to note that uh, for a jump discontinuity, the limit's gonna fail to exist, but for a point discontinuity, if all I have is a hole, that my limit is gonna exist as I approach that hole. So it's important to do some further investigation. So okay, what we need to do here is either find the answer analytically or excuse me, um, numerically using numbers or um, use a graph to help us um, with the answer. All right, so the first thing I do is I look, can I graph this without a calculator? I can. Now, if I had a calculator, that's, there's no question. I'm just gonna go and input this into y equals and look at the graph to see if the limit exists by exploring behavior um, on the graph close to zero on either side of it. Um, but uh, I do know what this graph looks like. So using a graph to help us. All right, as I approach zero, and this uh, means I have to look at behavior on both the left and the right-hand side. Okay, as I approach zero from the left, so I'm to the left of zero, I'm on the graph, I'm getting closer to x values of zero, uh, I can see that on this here and there function uh, that my uh, left-hand limit is negative one. So we might want to, with our work, put down here, well, the limit as x approaches zero from the left of this function, the y values are negative one. All right, let's explore the uh, right-hand limit. So I'm just gonna put a little semicolon here. Try and squeeze it in all right here. As I approach zero from the right on this function, and notice that I keep writing the function down, you need something here, whether you use f of x or the specific equation. Well, if I approach zero from the right side of zero, that means I'm walking back this way. Okay, those y values are one. Uh, we have a jump discontinuity because the left limit does not equal the right limit because these two numbers aren't the same, same exact number. We have a jump discontinuity. Uh, we know the limit fails to exist. So determine if the limit exists. No, it doesn't. If so, find it. If not, justify your, your answer. So I'm gonna come down here and kind of clean it all up. So this limit does not exist. And I'm gonna put because, I'm gonna abbreviate BC. Okay. And the, the notation we're gonna use is actually what we have up here. The left limit does not equal the right limit. You could probably use those words, left limit does not equal right limit, but it's, it's much better to support your work with these limit statements. Okay, and here what you're saying is the left limit does not equal the right limit. Okay, and your work up here supports this statement that you have down here. So this is a jump discontinuity, the limit fails to exist, and the explanation on that is going to be because the left limit does not equal the right limit, and this is the correct notation. Okay, let's take a look at 14. All right, uh, let's evaluate this limit analytically first, see what we get. Uh, insert negative 1, add 1, you're going to get the absolute value of 0, which is just 0. Insert negative 1, you're going to get 0. This is indeterminate further investigation, either plug in numbers to the left and to the right of negative 1, 
see what those outputs are. Okay, if those outputs are not exactly the same, okay, then we know we have this situation, the limit fails to exist. Um, numerically, that's kind of tedious, that's why I'm relying on a graph. Okay, so I'm going to draw the graph. It's the here and there function shifted to the left one. So here's negative one. Okay, and uh, we know that that's indeterminate here. All right, so that means that above negative one, we're going to start the open circle and go to the right. Below negative one vertically, we're going to start the open circle and travel to the left. Okay, these y values are still the same. This is one and this is negative one. Okay, we have to evaluate limits from the left and the right. As I approach negative one from the left, negative one from the left, my y values are negative one. I'm gonna put a semicolon here. Okay, let's look at the right hand limit. Okay, sorry it's kind of sloppy, it's just this stylus. Okay, don't forget to put the function again here. Okay, um, just visually, as I approach negative one from the right, my y values are positive one. These two numbers are not identical. That just means this graph will never come together. Okay, we have to make a jump. So from that, now we know that the limit does not exist and we know our explanation why it doesn't exist. And it's not okay to say a jump discontinuity. That's kind of an informal description of what's going on. Okay, it's more about your limit statements. So as I, oh sorry, this should be negative one. The limit as x approaches negative one is it does not exist because the left limit doesn't equal the right limit. I know it may seem kind of tedious to kind of write all this, but you know what, it's good practice because things have to be written um, and it just allows you that practice. So the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right. I promise I write much neater than this, it's just, it's kind of challenging with the stylus. All right, let's observe number 15. Plug in five, again, indeterminate. It's the here and there shifted to the right five. The result is gonna be the same the same meaning that the limit won't exist. So we'll just bypass all of this. But if you need extra practice sketching a graph, I encourage you to do so and then uh, confirm with the calculator. Okay, you're gonna get a does not exist because the left limit does not equal the right limit. In case you're wondering here, you don't have to actually show that the left limit equals negative one and the right limit equals positive one. Um, this would suffice as a um, uh, adequate, uh, I guess, you'd complete explanation. Because we all know what this graph looks like uh, out there in the calculus world. We all know what that graph looks like. And so we can draw from that and uh, this would be just enough. All right, before moving to the last two examples, let me just make this comment about any of the problems 13, 14, and 15, and I'm just gonna do that right here. And you can just watch and not write if you want. Um, I just want you to know that it's important to pay attention to the direction in which you're approaching that x value. So for example, I'm looking at number 13, and I'm gonna modify it just slightly. Okay, what if this was the problem presented to you? Okay, notice the comparison of what I just wrote down here in problem 13. Uh, the change is that I'm being real descriptive about which side to approach zero from. If I'm approaching zero from the left, I'm saying don't look at the entire graph, only look at x values to the left of zero. Well, graphically, we know that that answer is um, negative one. So if this was your problem right here, you don't want to say does not exist because we're not looking at both sides of zero. We're only looking at one side. And uh, so our left-hand limit exists, our right-hand limit exists, 
um, but the limit as you approach um, zero from both sides um, does not exist. So this would be certainly something um, totally acceptable. So I guess my point is pay attention to any superscript right here because just because you see this here and there function doesn't mean that your answer is always D and E. It's only if uh, there's no superscript here. Okay, so for these last two examples, um, I might encourage you to, um, at least with 16, try and graph this piecewise function without a calculator. Notice that all of the pieces are very manageable. We have uh, two linear functions, top and bottom piece, um, and then the middle one here is just a point, a point um, two two. So that would be easy to manage without a calculator. Um, if you look at 17, the top piece is the reciprocal function, not bad. Uh, but the bottom piece, piece is quadratic, and um, it's not in vertex form, so I can't really quickly identify the vertex, so it would make it more challenging to graph uh, without a calculator, so you might want to pick up a calculator and graph it. So if this is a, a place where you'd want to stop the vi video and attempt them on your own and then come back and confirm with my graph, um, you might want to pause the video right now. All right, so there it is. Okay, this is the graph of that piecewise function. Okay, look at the question. It's asking us, what is the limit as x approaches 2 of the function? Okay, uh, so let's investigate uh, behavior from the left and from the right. Let's look at the left-hand limit as x approaches 2 from the left. And I'm just going to use f of x. Okay, however, I could have chosen the appropriate piece. If I'm approaching 2 from the left, that means numbers smaller than 2. So this inequality tells me that I'm on this piece right here. So here's 2. As I approach 2, I'll be walking down the graph here. These points all have x-coordinates getting closer to 2. Notice that the y value is going into uh, this open circle of 0. So my left limit is 0. Okay, let's investigate the um, limit from the right. Okay, if I'm approaching 2 from the right, that means I'm not at 2, 2. I'm on this graph right here. I could use f of x again, or sometimes you'll see the specific piece here. Okay, so the right-hand limit. Notice that I'm walking down, walking down here, getting closer to 2 from the right. Well, what's the y value I'm going into? It's the y value of this open circle. And if you were to plug 2 into this piece, okay, we see that the open circle occurs at 5, so that's the intended height. Okay, I'm dropping down to 5. So we can clearly see from this that we have a left-hand limit that doesn't equal a right-hand limit. So therefore, this is a DNE, back to the question, and you would say because just what we have here, the left limit does not equal the right limit. If I'm approaching 2 from the left, again, remember, I'm going to use the specific name instead of f of x. Does not equal the right limit. And that piece was 5x over 2. All right, taking a look at number 17, uh, you might want to again, like I said, pause, see if you can come up with the graph if that's something that you need extra practice with. Okay, kind of pay attention to the scale that's on the x and y axis here. I know it's the reciprocal function to the left of 4, uh, so the vertical asymptote's at 4, um, and I just want the left branch. Uh, starting at 4, all I did was I plugged 4 in for each x, and my output was 13, meaning that the parabola, the parabolic function, starts at 4, 13. Uh, this graph's going to open up because of the positive coefficient, so I know I'm just going to have um, this piece of that parabola. All right, well, we can clearly see that the limit's not going to exist as x approaches 4. Um, it's not a jump discontinuity. It's kind of an interesting case. We have an asymptote to the left. Um, and so I guess, you know, in our explanation, we'll, we'll kind of see in a minute what we're going to write. All right, um, let's look at the left limit. So as I approach 4 from the left, I'm on this particular piece because numbers to the left of 4 are smaller than 4. That's how we know which one to choose. Okay, when I plug 4 in, I'm going to get 1 over 0. That's a does not exist because of the vertical asymptote. All right, here's my semicolon. Let's look at the right limit. Okay, 4 from the right means I'm on the parabolic function. Okay, when I plug 4 in, I get 13. That's how I knew where to start the parabola. Um, look at the left limit and the right limit. One's D and E, one's a number. 
All right, they're not both the same number, so we come back up here and we write D and E, okay, and the explanation, okay, because, uh, because the left limit does not equal the right limit. Okay, this one's kind of tricky because of that asymptote. So the left limit, I'm going to put F of X here to abbreviate, does not equal the right limit. Uh, I don't know that I've ever seen a problem like this where it's been interesting where you have an asymptote on the left and, and you know, not on the right. So I'm not sure that, you know, that's something we really need to be concerned about as far as an exact way to represent the, the description why it doesn't exist. But um, the left limit is positive infinity and the right limit is 13, so um, those obviously aren't the same, so that limit does not exist. Thinking about the total time of uh, both these videos is about 35 minutes. Thanks for hanging in there. Um, thanks for hanging in there on this one, too. Sometimes you just can't get all you need to say in in a short amount of time. We really need to linger on, on some of these problems, so thanks for hanging in there. Um, hopefully you understand the two different types of ways a limit can fail to exist, and that would be vertical asymptotes or jump discontinuities.